I had a laugh at that. Uh, Hubert, I just caught the tail end of that. I, I played with Christian 1991 with Christian actually and, and Grant Hill on the, the Pan American team. We used to play ping pong in Cuba uh, when we were, and he's a really good ping pong player. And we used to go at it. So I, I wanted to jump on and ask Hubert, you know, who was, who was a better ping pong player, but Leighton and I got to know each other and we would have wars and uh, yeah, he very straightforward, but uh, that was kind of cool to hear that. There's my opening I, statement, Andy. I don't usually that, give that's a great, yeah. That's I wasn't even going to make a new one. There you go. That's, 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 that's my, that's I'm, I'm done for the next whatever years. Until <laughs> uh, well, we'll go to Mike Barber with your first question then. I, I, I got nothing now. I was going to ask. <laughs> now, uh, Tony, uh, Coach Grant was on earlier talking about, you know, their team is at their best when they're able to uh, play low possession, control the pace. And uh, he said it's been a struggle because teams want to speed them up. That obviously fits into the style you want to play. What challenge is it, uh, maybe a different challenge, when you play a team that, that kind of embraces that same pace that you want? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just it comes down to execution. You know, they're they're physical and tough, and he's doing a good job with them. They've been in a lot of close games, and, um, you know, it's just trying to be your best and, and high quality I, you know, on the defensive end, offensively, getting good shots. Um, and, you know, we're not in a ton of, like, high-possession games, um, and so it's just a matter of execution and, and they, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna look for their good looks and play as hard as they can on both ends as will, will we. So, um, it's just, yeah, who's to me, who's executing and winning the majority of those possessions as the, as the game unfolds. And I know we touched a little bit on this in, in South Bend the other day, but, um, Jaden Gardner, his, his yeah. kind of getting back on track. Are, are you seeing a common theme to why he's been a little more effective the last four, two, four times? Yeah, I thought uh, Jaden had a really, you know, a strong game defensively and offensively it was good. Um, you know, I thought if you guys played, played hard, played well, everybody played hard. Um, but, you know, he just, uh, who can say exactly why, but he's, he's trying to find areas on the offensive end to, to be aggressive and continue to be sound. And then defensively, I thought he, he had a solid game. Um, you know, that's Notre Dame puts different kind of pressure on you with their offense and their ability to stretch it. And I thought Jaden worked really hard and, and, um, and took a step in that game, even defensively. So I was pleased with that as far as a pattern or why, you know, hopefully he's just um, realizing what this team needs on both ends and is, is just laying it down to the best of his abilities and continuing to improve. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we'll go to Scott Cash. Go ahead, Scott. Coach, I'm going to be that guy to ask you to look ahead just a little bit. Um, just your thoughts on going up against Coach K or what makes coaching against him different than coaching against anybody else? Uh, I mean, you know, again, I remember when I was started coaching um, and I was the head coach at Washington State and, you know, the, the standard in the league was UCLA. Uh, ben was there, Coach Holland, they went to three straight Final Fours and that was the standard that you measured yourself and they had really good talent and he was a really good coach and you know then when the opportunity arose to come here you know it was a chance to, as a coach as a program to test yourself against the standards of the league the Carolinas coach Williams and Carolina and then specifically uh, coach K and Duke because of what they had established and you know um, they're going to have excellent talent and they're going to be so well coached you know that when you have that kind of talent and that kind of coaching that is really a you know, it's a dangerous combination, you know, and, and they have, um, they're, they're so good, you know, and that's the staff and of course it's coach K and the players, all of that. And so um, they have an unbelievable home court advantage with that. They, they've just done it consistently. And so, um, you know, that just winning begets winning and there's just kind of, you, you feel that and they're used to getting everyone's best shot. We've experienced that a little bit. Well, a lot of it over the last years, you feel that, and so you got to be ready and right. And um, I think he's done a terrific job, obviously, in both of those areas. The talent he's brought in, um, you know, his experiences, he's seen it all. He's adapted and um, and just, um, you know, he's he's still and he'll do it until his last game is um, is very competitive. And as I'm sure I don't know all the inside stuff, but I'm sure he's very demanding, um, holds guys accountable, but but cares for them. And that, I think, is a uh, makes for um, an excellent coach. So. I, you know, the good teams, that's what it's like when you go against them. And really, college basketball is becoming you know, a lot of parity that way. Uh, we'll go to Greg Media. Go ahead, Greg. 
Yeah. Hey, hey, Tony, j- just to follow up on, on Jaden, it, it seems like he's been kind of automatic from that mid range j- jump shot uh, spot. Mm-hmm. A- has that been you guys working to get him open looks from that, from that mid range area? Is that him f- uh, having a natural feel for it? How do you kind of uh, assess that? I think, you know, you have to always take what the defense gives you. And sometimes that, if that's available, yep. He's, he's pretty good at that. Um, you know, there's times, you know, you get stuff inside, um, you know, he hasn't every now and then he'll shoot a three or drive. So it's just trying to find the soft spots in the defense, whether it's his own defense or a man to man and looking for those. Um, and again, sometimes he's scored in the post. Sometimes he's had a, uh, you know, catch it in those areas there. So those are those spots the last couple of games for sure against the North Carolina game. And then, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, um, the Notre Dame game, those were some available spots and he did a nice job. Um, in regards to that. Uh, we'll go to Preston Willett. But I think he came in with that. I guess that's it. So he could do that. I mean, sure he works at it, but I think that's where he's pretty good at operating. When he was at East Carolina, they did a lot of high-low stuff, kind of some of the uh, Coach the Kansas stuff. So obviously he was good at that. Hey, Tony. I don't know what you make of the stat. Y'all are 8-0 after losses this season. Just – is it a little more, is that something to take pride in or just something that, you know, you're looking for more consistency so you can string some more of these wins together? You know, it just, you, you, you step to each game and you just try to empty everything you got, give everything you got and, and just keep an eye. And we talk about, are we continuing to improve? And if we had a hard game, can we just be about the right stuff? And I think this, this team has improved. Um, and sometimes it hasn't, we haven't been able to, you know, if it's games like uh, good stretches of ball against Notre Dame, but couldn't almost a great comeback. But sometimes, you know, wh- whether we just haven't shot it well or certain things have stood out, but uh, that stat, uh, yeah, hopefully it keeps up. Um, I think I've said it a few times, you know, you just got to embrace the fact you got to play as hard as you can for as long as you can. And you're going to be in a lot of those close games in our league the way it is, at least the teams we've played. So it comes down to just, um, you know, trying to execute. And I think the games we've won, we've probably had a little more balanced at times. Other guys have, have you know, um, pitched in. But I just think our guys know that it's uh, it's a fine line and show up. And if usually in this league, whoever whoever's right and ready is usually the successful team. And then since Scott brought up Duke, uh, looking back at Ty Jerome's shot that he made down yeah. there a couple of years ago, what do you remember about that moment? And just kind of any stories, did Kay say anything to you after that game? I, I can't remember, like I said, I, you know, certainly the, look what the career of coach K goes without saying, but it's remarkable. And, you know, when you go in there um, that year, um, well, those were two, those were, they beat us twice Two pretty well. That was, no, no, not that year. I'm sorry. The next year they beat us twice. That year we went in there. Um, we've had so many, um, you know, come down to ball bouncing up a play here or there could have gone either way. Um, but I, I remember Ty that, that shot, that play, that was certainly a, a big win for us. And uh, again, you know, what an environment. Well, what a, what a great, you got to love that challenge to go in there and keep your, your poise and try to play at a high level. And um, I just remember different guys stepping up, but that was certainly a dagger shot. And um, you know, Ty is such a competitor and he had a way of making those plays. You know, when you get in those games, you are in these games, when they're in close possession games, offensive, defenses, plays have to be made. And, and Ty had a knack for making those big plays time and time again in his career. Go to Jermaine Farrell. Good afternoon, Coach. I uh, just wanted to ask you, uh, with your time playing in the NBA, and of course, you got a lot of players that came through your program that are in the NBA. What's the biggest piece of advice you gave to your players uh, to have the success, to have success in the NBA? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And, you know, it probably I'd have to really think about it to give you the, the spot on answer. But I know um, how important it is from my time. You know, I went in and played whatever. I, I don't know. I was the backup point guard for Muggsy. Only started a few games. So it was anywhere from 13, 15 minutes, whatever. I averaged a game. And there's only a, a handful of guys that come in, especially right away into the NBA that are – you know, destined to be superstars and just dominate. If you want to last in that league, you, you have to be so sound and, you, you, you know, the ability to defend, the ability to take care of the ball, the ability to fit in to a specific role and not hurt your team and then help your team. And, and those, areas, those are important pieces. Those are the things that, that teams are looking for where guys will 
show their worth and then stick. Again, you can't, you got to come in understanding that. And coaches want to win. So they're going to play guys that they trust, that are steady, that move the ball, do the little things. And of course, you have to have enough ability to play. But I think when guys understand that and have a clear picture of this is what it's going to take. And I got to be good in all those areas that are my high school and college coaches barked at me about because, you know, they'll just replace you and get you get another guy. And I think, you know, how we try to work with guys and most programs are like that to value the possession, value the little detail things, help you stick and last and become a valuable member. And then of course, how you are, your professionalism, how you treat people, that stuff matters when you're not a, it matters when you're a superstar, let's be real. But when you're trying to make an impact on a team, whether you're a end of the rotation guy, end of the bench, how you are, your presence, how you are as a team, all that stuff helps you stay. So those are the guys talk about those things and, and then no back seats. We always talk about it. Can't take a back seat. You got to go in there and, and, uh, and get after it and then not back down. But, but that's a kind of a jumbled answer, but I think hits on the areas that what I've seen our guys, why they've done so well and they've understood their roles and, and embraced it and been good in them and why they've either lasted or gotten chances. Thanks, sir. And then we'll wrap up the call with Hank Kurz. Go ahead, Hank. Hey, Tony, Francisco's uh, transformation from when he got there to now seems pretty remarkable. And you've talked a lot about how much hard work went into that. With such a young team, do you hold him up to the young guys as an example, not to embarrass what he was, but to show what, what he's become? You know, you always just, you, you, you always, as the saying goes, you try to speak the truth in love, right? You know, and I, I think with, with Poppy, I, I always just try to be real. I try to encourage guys, you know, but I always try to be real and genuine. I think young men are smart. If it's just fluff, eh, that's not good. But you can't just, you know, there's got to be a balance. And a guy like when a guy plays well or I'm seeing improvement, I think you have to let him know that and keep challenging him. And I think there's times when it's right in front of the team say, look, here's the deal. This guy hasn't been afraid to work. He's improving. He's doing things. He stays after it. And um, and I, I think it's a it's a balance. But, yeah, certainly to see his improvement, his health come along and his um, competitive fire. That was a you know, again, I always you try to find things when you get beat, um, you're discouraged. We say, all right, what were some bright spots? His second half was a bright spot in that game, his defensive rebounding and, um, you know, some of the plays he made. And, and um, so, yeah, yeah, I think you highlight it in the right ways, Hank. And he has come a long way. And. You know, again, hopefully with these guys, the more playing time they get and the opportunities, they just keep getting stronger and better and, um, and understand what it takes. Thank you. Welcome.